Thank you for that introduction, Leon, and thank you all for joining me today. My name is Michelle Dion, and I'm a third year PhD candidate in Professor Natalie Artsy's lab in the Institute for Medical Engineering and Science at MIT. Today, I will discuss our team's research into treating glioblastoma by delivering therapies directly to the post-surgical resection cavity using our adhesive hydrogel technology. So, despite significant advances in cancer therapy, brain tumors continue to be one of the deadliest and costliest of human diseases. Today, we'll focus on glioblastoma, which is the most common and most lethal type of primary malignant brain tumor in adults. Current glioblastoma therapy consists of surgical resection followed by concurrent systemic temozolomide chemotherapy and radiation. Surgery removes the bulk tumor and provides clinical relief. However, it is difficult to remove all cells using surgery alone as tumor cells diffusively infiltrate healthy tissue. Thus, radiotherapy and chemotherapy are used to eliminate these remaining cells following surgery. However, almost always, tumor cells persist and drive cancer recurrence. This results in a dismal prognosis for patients as indicated by a median overall survival of 15 months and one of the lowest survival rates of all cancer types, less than 10% over five years, as shown in the curve on the right. One of the major reasons why current therapy fails is because it is unable to effectively be delivered to the brain tumor. A key challenge preventing systemic therapy from reaching the brain is the presence of the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier segregates the peripheral blood from the delicate brain parenchyma, providing protection from circulating pathogens and toxins. While this barrier function is important to brain health, it also renders the blood-brain barrier impermeable to an estimated 99% of therapies, severely limiting the treatment options available for this challenging disease. Furthermore, many drugs across the BBB exhibit poor permeability, preventing the accumulation of drug in the brain at sustained therapeutic levels. Poor accumulation drives the need for increasing the amount of therapy used, which in turn increases the accumulation of drug in off-target tissues like the liver and spleen. This can result in the development of adverse side effects due to off-target toxicity. Even for therapies that successfully reach the brain without causing systemic toxicity, additional challenges remain. These include delivery challenges like drug transport and retention within the brain tissue and specificity of drug uptake by tumor or target cells, and biological challenges like intertumoral heterogeneity. Our approach to these delivery challenges is to use an adhesive hydrogel to mediate controlled delivery of therapy to the post-tumor resection cavity or inoperable brain tumors. Our hydrogel can serve as a local depot for a variety of therapy types and can provide tunable sustained therapy release. By delivering therapy locally, we are able to circumvent the blood-brain barrier and confine exposure of the therapy to the tumor site, limiting off-target toxicities and reducing the dose required to achieve efficacy, addressing many of the challenges I spoke about on the previous slide. Our hydrogel consists of two components, oxidized dextrin and polyimidoamine dendrimers, shown here. Upon injection, the aldehyde groups on the dextrin polymer can react with either the amines on the surface of the tissue, shown in pink, or on the surface of the dendrimer. This is a competitive reaction by design, where the tissue amines have faster reacting kinetics with the aldehyde groups than the dendrimer amines do, allowing tissue amines to be consumed first. This imparts tissue adhesion, which allows the material to mold to the tumor cavity to achieve high drug tissue interfacial interactions. The remaining aldehydes are then consumed internally by the dendrimer amines, imparting hydrogel cohesion and controlling drug delivery release. By modifying the formulation of the hydrogel, we can thus tune its mechanical and drug delivery properties to meet clinical needs. In this slide, I've summarized the technical features of our hydrogel that make it advantageous for local delivery to the brain. On the top, you can see examples of how hydrogel formulation can dictate therapy release kinetics and its responsiveness to the disease microenvironment. We've also demonstrated that the hydrogel can be sprayed onto tumor to tissue to form a cohesive gel that is scratch resistant and immersion resistant, making it ideal for administration to the post-surgical cavity. In preliminary intracranial in vivo studies, we've also seen that the hydrogel is well tolerated and biodegradable. We have shown the versatility of this hydrogel technology to mediate controlled delivery of small molecules, nucleic acids, and biologics to perfer peripheral tumors over the course of hours to weeks in our recent publications. To generate proof of concept data in intracranial tumors, we are conducting ongoing efficacy studies in orthotopic tumor bearing mice. In one of our studies, we are examining the effects of local doxorubicin chemotherapy in comparison to systemic temozolomide. Systemic temozolomide chemotherapy represents the current clinical therapy and is dosed daily over the course of five days. Doxorubicin was chosen as it is an effective and well-established chemotherapy that currently cannot be given to glioblastoma patients due to its toxicity. Here it is formulated with our hydrogel and given via intracranial injection into the tumor bed. The mice are monitored for tumor burden via bioluminescence IVIS imaging and for overall survival. The plot shown here depicts the bioluminescence of the tumor, a measure of tumor burden in this model, over time. You can see that following hydrogel injection on day 10, tumor bioluminescence decreases for groups treated with doxorubicin-containing hydrogels in comparison to untreated control groups and groups treated with systemic temozolomide alone. Here I've added representative images of 
and obtain using IVIS for mice in the untreated control group on top and in the doxorubicin, doxorubicin loaded hydrogel treated group on the bottom. Control mice show intense signal on day 20 and soon succumb to tumor burden, whereas the majority of mice treated with doxorubicin hydrogel show resolved tumor bioluminescent signals, suggesting decrease in tumor burden as a result of therapy. This reduction in tumor burden manifests an increased survival in mice receiving the doxorubicin hydrogel therapy. Whereas all mice that have received control or oral TMZ therapy have died, the majority of mice that received hydrogel mediated dox therapy remain alive and will continue to be monitored to see if tumor recurs. While the study is still ongoing, preliminary mantle COX analysis shows that the survival of the doxorubicin treated group or the combination therapy group is significant in comparison to control or oral TMZ groups. In summary, the results I have shown today demonstrate the promise of our local hydrogel delivery technology to circumvent existing delivery barriers and mediate effective glioblastoma therapy. We are currently investigating different drug candidates, including targeted therapies and immunotherapies, and different hydrogel formulations in vivo in order to select a lead drug candidate formulation. We welcome the opportunity to partner with you to expand your therapies, impact, and glioblastoma and beyond. With that, I'd like to thank my entire team and thank all of you for listening to how we are expanding the therapeutic arsenal available to brain cancer patients by improving intracranial drug delivery using our adhesive tissue-responsive hydrogel technology.